In Lesson 3.6, students see you do a demonstration in which you place a little jar of hot water, colored yellow, on top of a identical little jar of cold water, colored blue. In the lesson, we show you how to do that. So the question is, why does the yellow stay on top of the blue? So does hot water have a different density than cold water? So the big science ideas covered are that heating makes molecules move faster and they get a little further apart, so that makes them less dense. Cooling water makes molecules slow down, get a little closer together, and makes them more dense. So this kind of makes sense. But let's see if there's a way to investigate this. Kids take a cup of room temperature water and they color some very cold water blue and they put the dropper in the center and very slowly squeeze the cold liquid out and it drops to the bottom. Then they take another sample of water colored yellow but it's hot and they put the dropper about the same distance beneath the water and slowly squeeze it out and they see that it goes up. So the cold water sunk in the room temperature water and the hot water floated in room temperature water. So what's going on here? So we have an animation. It's similar to what students have seen before, but now it's in terms of density. So this is a picture of room temperature water. 25 cubic centimeters of water weighs 25 grams. And so the density is one gram per cubic centimeter. But how about if we heat it up? when you heat up the water the molecules move faster and get a little further apart and the volume of the water actually increases in this case we have it increasing by one milliliter or one cubic centimeter so you have the same number of grams that didn't change but now you're dividing by a slightly larger number 26 cubic centimeters instead of 25 so the density goes down it's lower than it was before it's less than one how about if we cool the water down so in this case, they move slower, get a little closer together. This time, instead of taking up 25 cubic centimeters at room temperature, it takes up 24 cubic centimeters, a little less. So we're dividing by a smaller number, so the density actually goes up. So colder water is more dense, and that makes sense because the colder water did drop down in the room temperature water. So on the student activity sheet, students have pictures of cold room temp and hot water and a little chart. The idea is to write in in cold water whether the volume is less than room temperature or more than room temperature. And for the mass, that would stay the same. So what would the density be? For hot water, is the volume more or less? Well, it's more. But the mass is the same. So then they write in the density. That would be a, a little less than room temperature. If you're in an NGSS state, there's a performance expectation, MSPS11, which says develop models to describe the atomic composition of simple molecules and extended structures. In lesson 3.6, students look at the density of hot and cold water. So they've already looked at the molecule of water. They already know that they're close together, that they move randomly. But the point here is that they move faster when they're heated and slower when they're cooled. Students develop a model to describe phenomena. In this case, the model is about molecules moving faster and getting further apart, which decreases their density, or moving slower, getting closer together, and increasing their density. And this idea of substances are made from different types of atoms. Of course, we know the atoms that water is made out of, that each pure substance has a characteristic physical property. In this case, what does water do when you heat it or cool it. And for scale, proportion, and quantity, it's this idea of looking at a macroscopic phenomena like cold water sinking in room temperature water and hot water floating on room temperature water and analyzing it down to the molecular level. So thanks for watching and good luck with the lesson.